Our scripture reading is Luke 2, 1 through 20. Luke 2, 1 through 20. And it came to pass in these days that there went out a decree from Caesar Augustus that all the world should be taxed. And this taxing was first made when Cyrenius was governor of Syria. And all went to be taxed, every one into his own city. And Joseph also went up from Galilee out of the city of Nazareth into Judea unto the city of David, which is called Bethlehem, because he was of the house and lineage of David, to be taxed with Mary, his espoused wife, being great with child. And so it was that while they were there, the days were accomplished that she should be delivered. And she brought forth her firstborn son and wrapped him in swaddling clothes and laid him in a manger, because there was no room for them in the inn. And there were in the same country shepherds abiding in the field, keeping watch over their flock by night. And lo, the angel of the Lord came upon them, and the glory of the Lord shone round about them, and they were sore afraid. And the angel said unto them, Fear not, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which shall be to all people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, which is Christ the Lord. And this shall be a sign unto you. You shall find a babe wrapped in swaddling clothes, lying in a manger. And suddenly there were with the angel a multitude of the heavenly hosts praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace, goodwill toward men. And it came to pass, as the angels were gone away, were gone away from them into heaven, the shepherds said one to another, Let us now go even unto Bethlehem and see this thing which has come to pass, which the Lord hath made known unto us. And they came with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the babe wrapped in a lying in a manger. And when they had seen it, they made known abroad the saying which was told them concerning this child. And all they that heard it wondered at those things which were told them by the shepherds. But Mary kept all these things and pondered them in her heart. And the shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all the things that they had heard and seen as it was told unto them. We uh, have a particular doctrinal matter that we take up oftentimes as we come to this day of Christmas, and that's the incarnation of Christ coming in the flesh. His existence had been since the beginning. In the scripture, it tells us, in the beginning was the Word. And he is considered the Word. And, and he was before all time. The beginning of time in which all creatures were produced and brought into being, found this eternal Word. The world was from the beginning, but the Word was in the beginning. Eternity is often expressed by being before the foundation of the world. The eternity of God is so described. And we see in, in Psalm 90, verse 2. Psalm 90, verse 2. Before the mountains were brought forth, or ever thou hast formed the earth, and the world, even from everlasting to everlasting, thou art God. So it sets forth plainly in the scriptures concerning this. And uh, we also look in Proverbs chapter 8. Proverbs chapter 8 and verse 23. I was set up from everlasting, from the beginning, or ever the earth was. So all these things talk about the pre-existence of Christ and um, his being the word and his coexistence 
with others. That the word was with God and the word was God. In John chapter 1, 1. But as one man wrote, let none say that when we invite them to Christ, we would draw them from God. For Christ is with God and is God. And it's repeated in the scriptures. It's repeated the same. He's the very same that we believe in and preach. He's the same as in the beginning with God, that is. He was so from all eternity. In the beginning, the world was from God as it was created by him. But the word was with God as ever with him. The word was God. We see several important points made in this in respect to his essence, in respect to his substance. For the word was God, a distinct person, of the same in substance, for he was God. In Hebrews 1, verse 3, we read there. Hebrews 1, verse 3. Who being the brightness of his glory and the express image of his person and upholding all things by the word of his power, when he had himself purged our sins, sat down on the right hand of the majesty on high. In respect to this, in respect to his happiness and so on, and he had this with God the Father even before the world began. And we know of his eternal existence. We also know, according to Proverbs 8, verse 30, Proverbs verse 8, chapter 8, verse 30, There we read. Then I was by him as one brought up with him, and I was daily his delight, rejoicing always before him. In respect, as one man wrote, in respect of counsel and design, the mystery of man's redemption by the word incarnate was hid in God before all worlds. We see in Ephesians chapter 3. Ephesians chapter 3 and verse 9. And there we read. And to make all men see what is the fellowship of the mystery which from the beginning of the world hath been hid in God, who created all things by Jesus Christ. So several of these references that we've mentioned talk about the preexistent Christ and uh, that we celebrate today, and we celebrate his coming in the flesh. We also see that he undertook uh, to bring us to God in 1 Peter Chapter 3, 1 Peter chapter 3, verse 18. For Christ also hath once suffered for sins, the just for the unjust, that he might bring us to God, being put to death in the flesh, but quickened by the Spirit. And we rejoice in that promise in God's word. He was himself, he was eternal with God the Father. He was with eternal with the Trinity. He was eternal in his being. And uh, what we celebrate was his birth. He was, as one man wrote, by him as one brought up with him for this. We see also... His role in making the world. And this is certainly here expressed. The scriptures say all things were made by him. All things were made by him. And so this kind of gives us, by the way, a, a little bit of a, a view 
about why there's such op opposition to the creation story that we have in Scripture and it's coming into being and uh, why there's many people who, who encourage evolution and teaching that and um, because it was though it was made by our Savior, he was the creator from the beginning. And we also see in Psalm uh, 33, verse 6. Psalm 33 and verse 6. By the word of the Lord were the heavens made, and all the hosts of them by the breath of his mouth. We have that statement in Scripture. By him, not as something that was subordinate, but something that, would, uh, that he would do with God the Father, and he made the world. Not as a, like a workman may work, but as the, but as the body sees by the eye. The contrary is denied. Without him was not anything made that was made. Whether it be the highest angel or whether it be to the thing of least estate. God the Father did nothing without him in that work. Now this proves that he is God. And we rejoice in that as we think of the Christ child and his birth. We could look at a number of other scriptures in Isaiah 40. Isaiah 40. And uh, verse 12. Isaiah 40 and verse 12. Who hath measured the waters in the hollow of his hand and meted out heaven and the span and comprehended the dust of the earth in a measure and weighed the mountains in the scales and the hills in a substance? Who hath directed the spirit of the Lord or being his counselor hath taught him with whom took he counsel who, and who instructed him and taught him in the path of judgment and taught him knowledge and showed to him the way of understanding behold the nations are as a drop of a bucket and are counted as the small dust of the balance behold he taketh up the isles as a very little thing and we see these promises that we have in Scripture and a number of other places too. In Romans chapter 1, Romans chapter 1 and verses 21 and 28. Because that when they knew God, they glorified him not as God, neither were thankful, but became vain in their imaginations, and their foolish heart was darkened. And then verse Verse 28, and even as they did not like to retain God in their knowledge, God gave them over to a reprobate mind to do those things which are not convenient. And that certainly speaks of things that we see about us today, about people don't want to hear about God. They don't want to hear about his commands. They don't want to hear about his word. They don't want to hear about sin. They don't want to hear anything about any eternal punishment in hell. They don't, uh, they don't want anything to mention uh, about people needing to be saved. And they, they would just assume, as it speaks of here, that, and even as they did not like to retain God in their knowledge, God gave them over to a reprobate mind to do those things which are not convenient. I, uh, I thought over the period of time what it means to be given over to a reprobate mind and the concept of it. What, what is it? 
we see some of the things that are advanced today and uh, in uh, in our in our country uh, that promotes Satanism that promotes wickedness that promotes things totally contrary to God's holy and infallible word we see this happen and uh, and I believe that people in our own country are given over to a reprobate mind. When you think about some of the things that they do, especially towards young children, and what the, and unfortunately, many libraries are promoting this drag queen sort of thing. And, um, and it's pathetic, it's terrible what's happening. But they do not like to retain the knowledge of God in their heart. They don't want to do that. They don't want to be reminded of it. They don't want uh, us to speak of it. And uh, I, uh, I've mentioned this before, but and just to note the contrast, when I was um, in high school, I was um, president of the Bible Club, and uh, the different organizations in the school were allowed to sponsor one assembly and the freshmen and sophomores had one and then the juniors and seniors would be the other other group and um, and so uh, it came for our turn uh, to have uh, sp to sponsor an assembly and uh, so the principal had uh, asked me you know who I had in mind to speak for that, and uh, so I told him, and it was he was a man who was a, uh, certainly a very godly man, and uh, he was a Presbyterian pastor, and uh, but we had wanted to invite him in to come and speak to an assembly that would be to the juniors and seniors, and uh, and I still remember this because I think part of this was in the time when the U.S. Supreme Court had ruled against prayer and Bible reading in the schools. And uh, so, the, so the principal said to me, I, I can't repeat all that he said about what he thought about the people that were gung-ho about not allowing Christianity in, in a school. But he said, he said, Huff, I don't, whatever. And he said, you, ha you go ahead and have your assembly. <laughs> and so we did and it was great and, uh, and we found out that as far as the faculty at the school the faculty at the school the only one of them in the whole school that expressed an opposition was an elder who was a teacher and who uh, was in the Presbyterian church that's just right across the street from where the school is but he, he, was, he was opposed to allowing any godly thing like that to, be, to come into the school. And so when we read about people don't like to retain God in their hearts, we see this sort of thing in our world today. And as there was a veil upon Moses' face, so is there upon people's hearts, as one man wrote. In the darkness of the types and shadows, the light shone, but such was the darkness of their understanding that they could not see it. It was therefore requisite that Christ should come both to rectify the errors of the Gentile world and to improve the truths of Judaism. We see in this passage also at verse 6, there was a man sent from God whose name was John. The same came for a witness, to bear witness of the light, that all men through him might believe. He was not that light, but was sent to bear witness of that light. That was the true light, which lighteth every man that cometh into the world. He, he, was, made, he was in the world, and the world was made by him, and the world knew him not. He came into his own, and his own received him not. But as many as received him... To them gave he power to become the sons of God, 
even to them that believe on his name, which were born not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. And the word was made flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld his glory, the glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. Note that particularly, that last verse that I read. And the word was made flesh and dwelt among us. And we beheld his glory, the glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. He gives an account of the witness he is about to produce. His name was John, which signifies gracious. His conversation was reserved, but he was not the less gracious. We see that we're told concerning John, in which this verse came from, the Gospel of John, that he was a man sent of God. The evangelist has said concerning Jesus Christ that he was with God and says that he was God, but, the, but here concerning John, that he was a man, a mere man, the contrast. So that's our Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ. We're told here what his office was in verse 7. Excuse me, in John chapter 1, in verse 7. The same came for a witness, to bear witness of the light that all men through him might believe. I was mentioning, I think it was last Sunday or the Sunday before, that the term was used about the news that the shepherds received. The term was used, glad tidings were given. The word for gospel comes from a, a, a German word, and it means good news. So the very, the very thing that's in that uh, teaching about the coming of, of the Christ child was good news. And I mentioned, I think it was two weeks ago, that, or two Sundays back, that it was good news, it's still good news, and it was good news at the birth of the Christ child, and we rejoice, it. we rejoice in it, and we are thankful for it. He taught men to look through him and pass through him to Christ. Through the doctrine of repentance from sin to that of faith in Christ, he prepared men for the reception and entertainment of Christ and his gospel by awakening them to a sight and sense of sin. Once again, the whole concept there, you know, is speaking of his uh, offer of salvation about people coming to know the Lord Jesus Christ as their Savior. There had to be talk about sin. People today don't want to talk about sin either, and uh, except to glorify it. And uh, it's about the only talking about it that we see any at all. But we see that we have to take heed of, of God's word. We have to heed God's holy and infallible word and rejoice in him for that. We must, as one man wrote, we must take heed of overvaluing ministers as well as the undervaluing them. They are not our lords, nor have they dominion over our faith, but ministers by whom we believe stewards of our own Lord of our Lord's house. We must not give up ourselves by an implicit faith to their conduct, for they are not that light, but we must attend to and receive their testimony, for they're sent to bear witness of that light. So then let us esteem them and not otherwise. Had John pretended to be that light, he had not been so much as a faithful witness of that light. But he didn't pretend to be that light, but certainly he, he spread that light. Christ was the true light. Verse 9, that was the true light which lighteth every man that cometh 
into the world. He was not a false light, but in comparison with Christ, he was a very small light. Christ is the great light that deserves uh, to be called so. Other lights uh, are equivocally compared to that light. Christ is the true light. And that's the message that we share today. That's the message that we uh, extend today for salvation through the Lord Jesus Christ. And we rejoice in that. The light of knowledge of the glory of God is said to be in the face of Jesus Christ. So as we come on this day when we celebrate Jesus Christ's birth, we know that he was from before the beginning. We know that all things created were created by him. We know that the seed of the woman would have conflict with the serpent and that being the seed of the woman being the Lord Jesus Christ. The light and of the knowledge of the glory of God is said to be in the face of Jesus Christ. And so on this day, may it be that we would rejoice in our Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ, the true light. He's here to enlighten, enlighten the Gentiles. He's here to enlighten others to a saving knowledge of the Lord Jesus Christ. His gospel is to be preached to every nation and language. We see him in Revelation chapter 14, verse 6. Revelation 14, verse 6. And I saw another angel fly in the midst of heaven, having the everlasting gospel to preach unto them that dwell on the earth and every nation and kindred and tongue and people. And that's the goal that we have. You think, and a lot of us have really come face to face with the uh, situation in Kenya and what's taking place there. Some have come in face to face with the persecution that exists in other countries, in, in Asia also. And they recognize this. And it causes us to see that Christ is the light. We had mentioned about the church in Bala celebrating its 20th year this, this past week. And I'm uh, very excited about it. And there are those who oppose them, of course, the Muslims there in that area of Kenya certainly oppose them. But we recognize that the light of the knowledge of the glory of God is said to be in the face of Jesus Christ. Christ was in the world. Christ was in the world. And the word before his incarnation upholding all things, and we rejoice. We think about where he says, I am come that they might have life, and that they might have it more abundantly. And so may it be that we will have opportunities to witness to those who are in need of salvation through the Lord Jesus Christ. And once again, praying for loved ones. And may the Lord carry out his will for his glory. Let's look to the Lord in prayer. Our Father, we're thankful for your holy and infallible word. And our Father, we pray that thou would strengthen us in our testimony, in our stand for the word of God and the testimony of Jesus Christ. May we bear witness to that light through the Lord Jesus Christ. May we not give up in our stand for the word of God and the testimony of Jesus Christ. May we faithfully proclaim the gospel. 
And may there be those who will come to a saving knowledge of Jesus Christ. For it's in Christ's name we pray. Amen.